In the heart of medieval Europe, a shadowy heresy known as Catharicism quietly thrived, challenging the very foundations of the Catholic Church. The Albigensian Crusade, a brutal and transformative chapter in history, would ignite a fiery clash between orthodoxy and dissent, leaving behind a trail of bloodshed and questions still echoing through the corridors of time. Join us on a journey into the heart of this genocidal crusade, which would forever alter the course of a forgotten era. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Cathars In the late 12th century, during the time of Pope Innocent III, a group known as the Cathars held beliefs different from the French king's authority and the teachings of the local Catholic Church. The Cathars had a unique belief system, seeing two opposing forces at play. God, representing good, and the Demiurge, known as Rex Mundi, responsible for creating a flawed physical world. Among their various beliefs, the Cathars thought that humans initially did not possess souls, and either Satan or God granted souls to people. Some even believed that souls could move from one body to another. Pope Innocent III was concerned about the spread of this heresy. He turned to Philip II of France for assistance. He asked him to convince Raymond VI, the Count of Toulouse, to either end the dissent or remove him from power. However, despite multiple attempts, Raymond VI did not address the situation. This situation frustrated Pope Innocent III, who eventually called for a crusade against the Cathars. He believed that eliminating heresy in Europe would make the region better prepared to defend itself against potential Muslim invasions. The Crusade In 1209, at the request of Pope Innocent III, 10,000 crusaders gathered in the vibrant city of Lyon. These crusaders hailed from various corners of Europe, converging with a shared mission to reclaim sacred lands in the south, a cause that united them despite their diverse origins. As they stood on the verge of this monumental journey, a pivotal question arose. Who would lead this grand expedition? Surprisingly, King Philip II of France, though aware of the threats to his realm, chose not to join the campaign personally. Instead, he pledged his troops, preserving his influence from afar. And so, the mantle of leadership fell upon the papal legate Arnaud Amalric, a respected figure from the Cistercian monastery of Chateau Abbey. Amidst these preparations, Raymond, Count of Toulouse, sought unity with his nephew, Raymond Roger Trinkable, Viscount of Beziers and Carcassona, to create a united defense against the Crusaders. However, his nephew declined, setting the stage for a complex web of alliances and rivalries. Following these tense negotiations, Raymond, the Count of Toulouse, eventually reconciled with the Crusaders. He publicly repented and sought reconciliation with the church in June 1209, bearing the weight of physical and spiritual penance and pledging alliance to the crusade. With this act, his lands were spared from the crusaders' wrath, shifting their focus to Raymond Rogers' territories. Thus, with resolve, the crusaders set forth from Lyon in late June, heading towards Montpellier, a stronghold of Catholicism. However, their true challenge awaited them beyond its walls, as they aimed to confront the Cathar communities around Albi and Carcassonne. Their primary target was Beziers, a city with a strong Cathar presence. Though not a Cathar himself, Raymond Roger implored for peace. He declared his loyalty to the church, disavowing any role in the spread of heresy. Yet, when his plea went unanswered, he vowed to defend Beziers. However, as the Crusader army approached Beziers, fear overcame Raymond Roger, 
and he abandoned the city, rushing back to Carcassona to prepare for the impending siege. Simultaneously, another group of crusaders, led by the Archbishop of Bordeaux, advanced to Casanuo, where they confronted alleged heretics, subjecting them to the flames at the stake. Meanwhile in Beziers, the crusaders unleashed a massacre upon the city's population, resulting in the deaths of around 20,000 people and the city's destruction by fire. After the tragic massacre at Beziers, the Crusaders directed their sights toward Carcassona, an ancient city that sheltered several Cathars. Upon arrival at Carcassona, the Crusaders wasted no time cutting off the city's water supply, despite negotiations from Raymond Roger. With limited resources and under duress, Carcassona eventually surrendered on the 15th of August, 1209 and the citizens were spared their lives but faced expulsion from their beloved town. In the ensuing months, Simon de Montfort, a notable French nobleman, was appointed leader of the Crusader army, and he quickly expanded his domain over Carcassonne, Albi, and Beziers. With Carcassonne's fall, other towns followed suit, surrendering without resistance, except Lestours and the nearby Cabaret Castle, and so they faced attacks from the Crusaders. Fortunately for the city of Lestores, a harsh winter and shortage of soldiers compelled Simon de Montfort to temporarily pause major offensives, focusing on consolidating his newfound territory. But in March 1210, fresh Crusaders arrived, reigniting the Crusade. With new troops, they captured the city of Bram and Minerva. After the siege at Minerva, the city of Terms became their next target, despite moments of defiance from Pierre Roger de Cabaret. Fortunately for Terms, an unexpected rainstorm briefly relieved the Cathars, allowing them to break the siege and escape on the 22nd of November. Yet, the Crusaders did not stop there. They would continue their siege, returning to the stores in 1211, mounting pressure on Pierre Roger de Cabaret until he agreed to surrender. After conquering the stores, Simon laid siege to Levar, drawing fresh troops across Europe. However, along the way near the village of Montgay, Raymond Roger, Count of Foy, and his son, Roger Bernard, sent forces from Toulouse to lay ambush for the Crusaders, resulting in the death of almost 6,000 Crusaders. Despite this ambush at Montgay, Simon and the Crusaders pressed on, eventually turning their attention towards Toulouse and besieging the town. While Simon's troops were initially forced to withdraw due to shortages and waning support, he returned in early 1212, employing a strategy of swift military movement and offers of sparing towns from sacking in exchange for their surrender. This unrelenting encirclement isolated Raymond de Toulouse causing financial hardships and disloyal vassals, setting the stage for a climactic and turbulent chapter in this historical saga. Meanwhile, as the Albigensian Crusade raged on, the Cathars, faced with the Crusaders' threat, turned to Peter II of Aragon for help. Peter was a seasoned warrior and crowned king of Aragon. His sister, Eleanor, had married Raymond VI sealing a crucial alliance. With victories against the Moors in his record and skillful persuasion in Rome, Peter convinced Pope Innocent III to intervene, hoping to halt the Albigensian Crusade and refocus on the Middle East. On the 15th of January, 1213, Pope Innocent III wrote sternly to Arnaud Armory and Simon de Montfort, demanding Simon's lands be returned and stripping most crusading indulgences. But concerned by Simon's unchecked power, Peter formed a coalition with the county of Toulouse. Unfortunately, this action alarmed Pope Innocent III, who, after hearing Simon's side, denounced Peter and reinstated the crusade, sending a warning letter to Peter against opposing the crusaders. The crusade resumed but could not be fully restored to its original status as the Papal Bull Mior, issued by Pope Innocent III in April 1213, 
limited indulgences to the Languedoc. Despite this limitation, Simon continued capturing castles and solidifying control during the crusade. In July 1216, Pope Innocent III died, causing the crusade to be temporarily halted. Yet the struggle persisted, and Pope Honorius III instructed Simon to resume the crusade, which he did. Still, he met his end in a defensive battle in June 1218. Nevertheless, the crusade continued, and full crusading indulgences were reinstated against the Cathars. To replace Simon Montfort, Philip appointed Prince Louis to lead the crusade. They successfully besieged the city of Marmande, although they failed to retake Toulouse after a six-week siege. As the crusade pressed on, in November 1225, the Council of Borges excommunicated Raymond VII to deal with the Cathar heresy, authorizing the Albigensian tenth tax. Yet, the crusade wasn't declared over. Instead, Louis VIII led a renewed crusade recapturing several towns except Avignon, which would later be captured in September 1226. But after the death of Louis VIII, Queen Regent Blount of Castile continued the crusade, hoping to unite forces with Raymond VII to fight the Cathars and return church properties. She offered a treaty in 1229, recognizing him as ruler of Toulouse, and so, an agreement was signed at Meaux on the 12th of April, 1229, which would also adversely lead to the end of the military campaign against the Cathars. The Inquisition With the end of the military campaign against the Cathars, in 1234, Pope Gregory IX established a formidable institution called the Inquisition. This institution was tasked with the singular aim of uprooting heretical movements, especially the Cathars. Their operations were felt in cities like Toulouse, Albi, and Carcassonne, where they employed various methods to force Catharism into hiding. Those accused of Catharism were required to wear yellow crosses as a symbol of penance, while others had to embark on obligatory pilgrimages and some even had to visit churches monthly for self-flagellation. However, the more unrepentant ones faced imprisonment, loss of property, or the ultimate punishment, burning at the stake. However, most of the accused managed to escape with less severe penalties. But in 1242, tensions escalated when a rebellion against France and two inquisitors were assassinated. This assassination led to a harrowing siege at the Cathar fortress of Montségur in 1244, resulting in the brutal massacre of over 200 Cathar perfects. Yet, Catharism didn't wholly vanish, but existed secretly. And so, the Inquisition relentlessly pursued Cathars, even torturing them to root out the heresy. Still, they only managed to catch a few. Over time, the county of Toulouse came under French rule, and the Inquisition faced financial difficulties until King Philip IV renewed his support due to regional unrest. And as time went on, Pope Clement V introduced reforms to protect the rights of the accused. But by 1350, under the leadership of Inquisitor Bernard Guy, all known remnants of the Cathar belief were extinguished. The Aftermath It is not far-fetched to say that the period of the Crusades was a turbulent period that left an indelible mark on France as the aftermath saw the number of French recruits for future Crusades dwindle. In contrast, the French monarchy gained significant power, reshaping the balance of power with the papacy in France. So, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section below and remember to hit that subscribe button. To watch more insane and unique stories, click on the video options on the screen. You won't regret it.